在今天的全球部落志单元，要向您介绍温柔又坚强的单亲妈妈的人生故事。主角是三位独自抚养孩子的原住民妈妈，他们除了努力工作维持生活之外，他们最大的期望就是可以脱离贫困。这些母亲辛苦追求的目标，就是要为孩子们营造更好的环境，给他们一个有希望的未来。天才刚亮，独自抚养四个孩子的 Alice m c k a y 就要叫孩子起床，准备一天的工作。Alice 生长于贫困，很小就离开母亲，被送到寄养机构。Because my mom actually was adopted out in the 60s scoop, and is what I would consider a real survivor. She physically survived, but mentally. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, she didn't survive. Like she's dead. Physically, she's walking around, she's talking, she's she's doing all that, but she's she doesn't have the capacity to be to be a mother. Connor. Alice 自己也成为母亲，和孩子住在加拿大曼尼托巴省的首府 Winnipeg， 环境依然不好过。不过孩子看起来很快乐。帮孩子准备要穿的衣物 ，Alice 希望自己的孩子可以不要像他一样，是在贫困和刻板印象中长大。Yeah, and it's like people assume that if you're poor, you're desperate. If you're poor, you're dirty. If you're poor, your kids are stupid. If you're poor, like you just, you're nothing. Alice 和她的孩子并不是单一个案。在加拿大，都会区的原住民族儿童在贫困环境中成长的比例是非原住民族加拿大儿童的两倍。而 Alice 的故事其实也不特别。她很早就谈恋爱、生孩子，但是感情关系并没有维持太久。It's not、uh, something I aspired to be. Like I didn't grow up thinking, "Oh, you know, I'd really love to be a single mom with a low income and four kids to feed." That's what I really, really want to be. Items for what? Now Alice 有得到养育住宿的补助，也有社会福利补贴，但要平衡收支还是很难。每个月不到一千四百元加拿大币的收入，有三分之一要付房租。三分之一是全家大小的伙食费，剩下的就要去付其他的开销和账单。每两个礼拜 ，Alice 会收到一袋来自社福机构的食物。这些额外的食物让 Alice 的口袋见底时，还是让孩子可以有东西吃。I would say the last week before like payday or child tax or whatever, and you're trying to make meals out of nothing. I would say is the hardest, and then the kids are like, "What is this? I don't like it." And I'm like, "It's what we have. Eat it." Because of her own experience, this young mom is very hopeful that her child's future is different. It's really hard, and sometimes it's hard not to feel weak and to feel like you just want to give up and just fall on your face.、Um, but I think that. You have to look within yourself. 为了孩子 ，Alice 没有放弃，努力取得社区支持工作者的结业学历证明。只是想要出去工作，就必须找托育中心或是保姆照顾孩子。但是一个月高达一千三百二十元加拿大币的费用 ，Alice 根本负担不起。要出去工作，似乎遥不可及。Alice 不愿意认输，不断尝试。在四年前，走进了胡塞利家庭中心的大门，提供他托育的服务。条件是他要在这里帮忙。
，看中心哪些工作需要人手，不管是打扫或是服务的工作，都要支援。Alice 抓紧机会，虽然这样只能让她每个月多赚两百元加拿大币，其他的收入仍然仰赖社会福利，但 Alice 一直坚持要在这里工作。对她来说，这是为孩子树立典范的原则问题。I mean, it's like very cliche and it's so like old-fashioned, but I mean, children do learn what they live. 雇佣 Alice 的胡塞利家庭中心执行长很肯定 Alice 的表现。Alice keeps me on my toes, morning, noon, and night. I have never had the past that she's had, but she's she's going to go somewhere. That's how I see Alice. I really like her spunk. I, I like that type of person. They've got edge. They've got attitude. It's like good, and let's hope they don't beat it out of her. So many people, it's beaten out of them. If you look at people that are on welfare, it's you're supposed to act a certain way, be a certain way, and I don't ever want Alice to lose that edge. Alice 并没有打算就此止步，她还有许多梦想，包括要注册就读教育辅助的课程。她希望可以照样工作。然后在家远距学习，如果顺利，他会可以找到教育相关的工作，会有不错的薪水，也可能会有托育的服务。And so for me, like looking t w y e a r s down the road, I want to have a family home. I want my kids to be able to even have the option of going back home if they needed to. And knowing that 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 was there, that they would have somewhere to go if something, you know, that there would be support there. Many people, just like Alice, want to continue studying, get a higher, more qualified education. They believe that education is an important way to avoid poverty. 不过，真的要回到校园念书，收入势必会受到影响。要怎么兼顾家庭照养，又是另外一个问题。住在温哥华的 Veronica Morgan 跟 Alice 一样，是独自抚养四个孩子的原住民族单亲妈妈，同时也是全职学生，非常辛苦。但她相信，一切付出都很值得。I plan on graduating in 2018 with my bachelor's of social science and humanities. 三十三岁的 Veronica 在温哥华出生，两岁就被送到寄养机构。她的父母是遭人诟病的加拿大原住民族寄宿学校的幸存者，没有能力抚养 Veronica 和她的兄弟姐妹。到十九岁之前 ，Veronica 在十二个寄养家庭中流转，并且失去与所属的原住民族文化的连结。这样的经历让他立志要为和他有一样遭遇的孩子改变现有体制。The courses I'm taking right now is Indigenous studies and Indigenous health and creative health. My goal with that is to implement them into a program writing for foster homes and identity, implementing identity into the system. 来自 Squamish 族的 Michelle Nahani 也是单亲妈妈。她在一九八九年创立顾问公司，现在已经发展成成熟的传媒设计公司。Michelle 决定重返校园，并且在二零零八年获得专业传媒的学士学位，现在正在就读硕士班。念书所需要的花费都是靠自己付清，更成功让收入增加了一倍。对 Michelle 而言，这辈子所做过最棒的决定。就是回到学校念书。I'm a single mother, and and I know a lot of native single mothers, and so we really have, you know, we've got a lot at stake, right? We're supporting our children. We want to be great role models. We're trying. We're being part of this generational shift. Michelle 所说的世代交替在研究中非常明显。一份加拿大替代政策中心所做的原住民族与加拿大其他人口收入差距的研究报告就指出，完成高等教育、取得大学学历的原住民族女性人数高于原住民族男性，而取得硕士学位的原住民族女性所赚取的收入平均比非原住民族女性还要高。不过，只有百分之一的原住民族女性会念到硕士，非原住民族女性则有百分之五。
。此外，这份报告也指出，住在都会区的族人收入也会比住在保留区的族人还要高。在都会区成长的 Veronica 表示，这就像一刀的两刃。It gives me encouragement to continue on with my post-secondary education, but at the same time, it kind of disappoints me that that that's the statistics that's showing right now, because now we're in a position of moms leaving their home their hometown to go and get an education, and you know it's, it no longer has been a community raising a child. Or a father being an assisting to raising their child. It's you know, moms going out and creating a different way of living. Veronica 非常了解和部落分开的困难。虽然她找到些许的资金支持她的课业，但她所属的部落的议会和自治政府却拒绝提供资金，原因是认为她已经获得教育补助的上限。Veronica 仍然继续努力争取。此外。孩子的养育补助也常常没有准时拨款。Is to bring in more income. I've got a small cleaning service that I provide to residential house housing.、Um, I take on really weird jobs. Like I do in the summertime, I sort tuna, and it's really out of my element. But it's one of those weird jobs that I actually fell in love with. 事业有成的米少也曾经经历过一段苦日子，才有今天的成就。You know,、uh, we had a lot of challenges regarding housing.、Uh, my daughter and I had to move a lot of times, but it actually just inspired me more to to just to keep steady and to keep、uh, working and making sure that I develop these long-term relationships with clients. And so that's what's really, and then, like I said, pursuing my post-secondary as well has just made me more valuable and have more to offer the clients, and then which has in turn, you know, increased our stability financially. 不过，要脱离贫困，走出不同的路，教育固然是重要途径，却不是唯一途径。Kate Henry 是北石省美替联邦的主席，也是前任原住民教育学院的院长。他表示，也曾经看过不是透过教育而冒出头成为部落领导人的女性。I just think the report that speaks to、uh, what we see as a trend, and I see within the Aboriginal community, you see a lot more Aboriginal women taking on leadership roles, not just in terms of education, but、uh, chief of councils,、uh, urban Aboriginal organizations, national Aboriginal organizations. You're seeing、uh, Aboriginal or Indigenous women taking that leadership role on, leadership role on, and I think、um, the report only reinforces that that's a trend that's going to continue for a long time. 距离 Veronica 要完成大学学业的二零一八年还有一段时间，知道不容易，但一切都是为了孩子。What makes me proud about my children is how much love they have, and that's what keeps me going sometimes. 在另外一个城市努力的 Alice 可以继续保持希望的力量，也是来自于自己的四个孩子。Like if you ask my kids, I don't think they would know that we're poor. They would probably think we're rich. They're all gonna finish high school and go on to post-secondary, right? Yeah. Are you gonna be a lawyer or a doctor? Doctor. A doctor.